Oh, Levi and Naomi, I'm going to take a moment holding my Bible, uh, my hand, the Word of God, the Bible. And the Bible has a lot to say about marriage. Now, right now, you don't really care about that. <laughs> but, you know, it does matter a little bit, you know. The world has their ideas, their ways, but we, we as Christians know that God's blessing upon our life matter. And uh, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. I recently got a letter uh, from John Reynolds. He'd visit our church and our family. And uh, he said that you have a thriving church and a thriving family, a thriving family. He says, what more could you ask for this side of eternity? And as you two come together, boy, there's nothing better than you two coming together in marriage and creating your own family unit. It's exciting, and God's blessing upon that marriage is so important. I want to mention also that according to the Bible, marriage is honorable. And um, the book of Hebrews chapter 13 says marriage is honorable in all. And honorable, it's distinguished. It is uh, illustrious, it's noble, it's of high value. And uh, what you're doing is important and it's wonderful. For lunch today, Levi, we had that waitress and I said, you're, this is my son, he's getting married. And it took her back and, and she was sort of shocked because in today's world, not very many young people or people really go and get married. It's not as lifted up in our society as it should be, but your friends and family that are here today, Christians, they know that marriage is honorable and they know that it's important. It says in the book of Proverbs, Miss Naomi, verse thir or chapter 31, it talks about the virtuous woman. Her price is far above rubies, far above rubies. And uh, Levi, Miss Naomi is a gift from God to you that's more precious than money uh, more precious than rubies. Now, marriage is God's idea. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, it says, And God said, It's not good that the man should be alone, <laughs> but I will make him and help meet for him. And uh, the Lord knew you needed help, Levi. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. I, I want to apologize to Brother Motichka publicly. Yeah. And... Uh, I got the better end of the deal. Uh, my two sons marrying two Motichkas, and uh, I'm thankful, Miss Naomi, that God has given you to my son Levi, and marriage is God's idea. Marriage is two becoming one. In the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse six, it says, wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, what God hath joined together, and that's important. God is joining you together. Let not man put asunder. In the book of Amos, that famous verse, can two walk together except they be agreed. And uh, you two are coming together in a short bit to say your marriage vows. And those vows represent agreements. Two becoming one in ideas, in thoughts, in goals, in dreams, it's wonderful, wonderful, you two coming and becoming one. And marriage is for a lifetime. In Matthew chapter number six, verse 19, verse six, it says, what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Today is the celebration day. There's gonna be a feast afterwards. You'll be leaving out in that vehicle after in a few, uh, few hours. And, uh, but that's just, not, it's just the beginning of a lifetime together, a lifetime of joy. And in reality, I believe marriage gets better and better as the years go by. I'm very proud of you, Levi. We, as a congregation, as friends and family, we're proud of you, Levi. We're proud of you, Naomi. And I believe God is looking down and thankful that you two are coming together in marriage. Which leads to this. It's time for the marriage vows and ceremony and thankful for the Motichkas 
and the Nettisimes, we give our blessing upon this marriage. We want to ask the congregation, does the congregation give their blessing on this marriage? If you do, say, we do. We do. We do. And uh, that's wonderful. I don't know if that was a no, but if it was, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, oh, it's time for the wedding vows. And uh, praise the Lord if you'll, Levi, get the wedding ring for Miss Naomi. Now, this time, make sure you keep your eyes upon her. I'm going to ask you a question, Levi. Levi, will you have this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Will you love her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, keep thee only under her so long as you both shall live? I do. Good. <laughs> then repeat after me. Say, I, Levi, Nedesheim. Take thee, Naomi Motichka, to be my lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, in poverty or in wealth, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. All right, Miss Naomi, will you have this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? Will you love him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health, in poverty or in wealth, forsaking all others? Keep thee only unto him so long as you both shall live. Then repeat after me. Say, I, Naomi Motichka, I, Naomi Motichka. take thee Levi Nettesheim, Take thee, Levi Nettesheim to be my lawfully wedded husband, to, be my lawfully wedded husband to, have and to, hold, to have and to hold from this day forward, from this day forward for, better or for, worse, for better or for worse in sickness and in health, in, sickness and in, health, in, poverty, or in wealth, and poverty or in wealth to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish till, death do us part. till death do us part. And that's wonderful. Good job. At this point in the ceremony, they're going to step back here, take two different sands, and pour them into one sand mixed together. And uh, that, re that, that pictures two people coming together, two becoming one in holy marriage.
you both were trying to sneak a kiss in there. <laughs> now the moment we've been waiting for, I now pronounce you husband and wife, you may now kiss your bride. Turn out way. Let me introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Levi Nettesheim. I'm Levi's oldest brother, and he's and he's going to take the the word of God and give you a little Bible study. Amen, amen. Now, folks, what we've witnessed here tonight was not just a beautiful wedding, and it was a tremendous wedding, but also what we saw here tonight was an excellent representation of Jesus Christ and the church. You see, as the groom walked down from the platform and down here to the floor. As the groom one day walked down for his bride, there will come a day when the Lord Jesus Christ will descend from heaven and will gather his bride, the church. Now, according to the word of God, the bride of Christ is the church, and the church is comprised only of those people who have been born again by grace through faith. Now, there's a lot of people here today, many I know, but many I do not know, and it would be a shame to come to a Christian wedding in a Baptist church and to leave not knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. There's only one way to be ready for Jesus when he comes to catch away his bride, and there's four things you need to know, and very briefly, and I will be brief, the first one, the Bible teaches us that we're all sinners. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Sin is when we break any one of God's laws, whether it's the Ten Commandments or any part of the law, that's sin. And all of us here tonight, if we were to stand before God, we would be guilty of breaking God's laws. But secondly, the Bible teaches that there is a penalty for sin. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, for the wages of sin is death. If I got what I deserved, if I got what I've earned for my sin, that penalty would not just be a physical death. But in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, the Bible says, In death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And so according to the word of God, not only are we all sinners and guilty before God, 
but there is a coming judgment. And if we got what we deserved, it would not just be the physical death, but the second death called hell. So please hear me very carefully tonight. The third thing that you need to understand is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The payment for your sins has already been paid. In fact, in Romans chapter 5, the Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless, perfect life, and he died on an old rugged cross. But he didn't just die as a symbol um, for, all of, for all of humanity. Jesus died for you, and Jesus died for me. Not only that, but three days later, he rose from the grave, proving that he was God. So we understand we're sinners. We understand the penalty for sin would be hell. Thankfully, Jesus paid for those sins on the cross. But lastly and most importantly, there is a decision that you have to make. And in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible puts it very clearly. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Not might be saved, not shalt be saved after a while, but an immediate salvation if you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and call upon him with your mouth. And lastly, Romans chapter 10, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, could it be that you came here tonight to see a wedding? And as I mentioned before, as the groom came down to catch away his bride, one day Jesus is coming again to catch his bride. But if you have not been born again and you're not saved, you will not be ready for that. And not only will you face the physical death, but worst of all, the second death of hell. If, you, if you'd bear with me for a moment, could I have everyone bow your heads and close your eyes just for a moment? Thank you for your understanding. If you're here tonight with heads bowed and eyes closed and you have never been saved, you've not been born again, you've never made that decision, and you know you're not saved, you could call upon the name of the Lord and ask him to save it. You could say something like this. You could say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and sinners deserve hell, but I don't want to go to hell So I trust you, Jesus, and you alone to pay for my sin debt and take me to heaven when I die. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you look right this way for a minute, or if you're here tonight and you called upon the name of the Lord and asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save you, you are eternally saved. And praise the Lord for that, and maybe that's why the Lord brought you here to this beautiful wedding tonight. Thank you. Brother Randy. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, now, we came for the wedding. The wedding's already happened. That thing's over with. Now, 